Okay, today we're going to continue the discussion of uh, costing techniques. Now, we'll leave it up to the uh, to the candidates to uh, make the distinction between, or to review the, their understanding of the distinction between job costing and its application and also batch costing. The focus today will be on process costing, which relates to the mass production, large uh, number of items being, of identical items being made in a uh, uh, a continuous uh, process, let's say uh, cans of soup moving from one stage to the next um, and therefore the costs of production have to be uh, averaged over the large number of items produced. To set the scene here uh, what we would like to do is um, provide an illustration with numbers. I think it makes the uh, uh, it, it conveys the sense of process costing uh, much more um, uh, concretely and vividly and also uh, it's the uh, use of uh, T accounts which uh, we believe is, is quite useful for this purpose. So let us visualize now that the uh, a product is being uh, is, is being made and it's moving from a previous process, process A, into the current process that we're concerned with called process B. And the, in, the units that are being introduced from process A, they're 1,000 in number, and they have um, accumulated uh, production costs of $20,000. This is our starting point. Now, during process B, there's going to be the addition of the following costs to the uh, to the product to the to the 1,000 units we're adding five thousand dollars worth of materials three thousand dollars worth of labor and two thousand dollars worth of um, overheads as a result of this the thousand units remain the same number of course but now they have an accumulation of thirty thousand um, dollars worth of materials, labor, and overheads uh, built into them of, uh, of costs. So what we can say that at the end of process B, these 1,000 units are ready to go out to process C, and they will carry with them an accumulation of $30,000 um, worth of production costs. So we can see here that the uh, the whole thing has to balance properly in terms of number of units and the costs which are incurred. We can also say, okay, that the uh, cost per the average cost per unit now is clearly thirty dollars, thirty thousand divided by one thousand units. Uh, in fact, we can generalize the what the average cost will be. Uh, this is a formula that one should really commit to memory, but more important than just pure memorization is to, uh, is to understand all the parts of it. And that would be the average cost per unit of a, of a product is the total cost of inputs. We saw that already with the uh, $30,000 uh, here, less the scrap value of any rejected units. We haven't spoken about scrap value yet, but to the extent that some realizable value through getting through selling scrap uh, can be achieved, this will reduce the uh, or is an offset, partial offset to the total cost of input. Also, in the denominator, the total number of units of input, as in our case, the 1,000 units, may be subjected to some normal uh, amount of loss. Amount of units which which go wrong and therefore we need to factor this into the number of units which come out as good units at the other end of the process. Now a key thing here is what do we mean by normal loss? Normal loss means that in, as part of our planning if we know that a certain percentage of the input units are going to be uh, defective, then we have to plan for that. If the expectation is that, based on experience, 
a certain number of units go wrong, then we should already um, anticipate that and build that into our average cost per unit calculations. This is how it works. Using our previous example, let's introduce the notion of a normal loss. Now, let's assume that the 1,000 units that are going to be introduced into process B will result in a normal loss of 10% of the input. In other words, what will come out the other side and go on to as good output to process C will be only 900 in number because 10% of the 1,000 or 100 will be subjected to normal loss. This means effectively that we're going to have the same $30,000 of costs accumulated, but now instead of 1, 000, dividing 1,000 units into it, we have number of units of input, 1,000 minus the normal loss or 900 units in the denominator. This will give us an average cost per unit of $33.3. .3. Each unit that survives process B, for example, and comes out as a good good unit, is actually shouldering um, $33.30 instead of $30. .30. That's just a it's just building into the cost calculation this normal loss. We can also look at the um, at the process account to capture this um, this 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 outcome. The left side of the process account is as it was before, introducing 1,000 units. With uh, uh, at that point at the beginning of process B, twenty thousand dollars of accumulated costs and adding 10,000 in costs, production costs in process B. Same as before. What's different is on the right side here. Now the output to process C is 900 instead of 1,000. And we disclose separately here normal loss 100 units. And there's no question of any scrap value being achieved. And therefore these normal loss units are absolutely zero in value, which means the $30,000 are borne exclusively by the 900 units as we had calculated up here. Okay, so that is basically uh, showing how the existence of normal loss affects us in our cost accounting. Now we can go one step further and say, okay, now given the fact that we have 100 units that are subject to normal loss, what if they had a scrap value? In other words, if this were not zero. Well, let's see what the uh, impact would be. Suppose there was a scrap value of $5 per unit for the normal loss, the lost units or defective units. This would mean that our process accounting would look as follows. The left side, same as before, the units that we introduced, but on the right side now, we have, uh, the only difference we have here is that instead of zero, we have a normal loss of 100 units valued at $5 per unit to give us $500. Notice that the accumulated cost of 30000 stays the same. Therefore, the amount of cost which is connected to the 900 units, good units is reduced from 30000 to 29500 Pay care, close attention to how these numbers are presented in comparison with the previous process account where there was a scrap value equal to zero. Now, if we put this into our average cost per unit uh, calculation here, then we can say that the, that the total cost of the input, $30,000, is reduced by the scrap value of normal loss units. That's $500. and that this is going to be divided by 
number of units input minus normal loss that would be 900 units so 29,500 divided by 900 is equal to an average cost per unit of $32.78. You can see here that because the uh, there's been a scrap value realized, not, not a big amount, but, but nevertheless something greater than zero for the normal loss units, we have in fact achieved um, a slight reduction in the average cost per unit from $33.30 to $32.78.